Hello everyone, this is Sanchit, a second year undergraduate from the Department of Chemical Engineering. We from Group 18 have done a project on geothermal heat pumps under the course CL 246. My teammate Divishri will take over in the middle of the presentation. So let's start. Rising global temperatures are making living without an AC more and more difficult by the day. However, a majority of the people are concerned since ACs also contribute to the problem and are also very expensive to operate. They are looking for new ways to regulate heat in their homes and workplaces. So we looked at various alternate methods for ambient cooling that can be installed. Also, we found out that geothermal heat pumps are environment friendly. They use renewable source of energy. Once installed, they have low running costs and have longer life than other methods. So the solution that we propose are geothermal heat pumps with that, that have to be installed with appropriate materials to regulate heat. According to a survey we conducted, 46% of people were interested in installing a new solution at both homes and workplaces provided it has less recurring usage cost. Geothermal heat pumps seem the ideal solution. However, they have high installation costs. Thus, we looked into optimizing geothermal heat pumps so that the investment is paid off in the shortest amount of time possible. The link given in this slide is uh, that of a research paper that gave us a wide perspective on how we can quantitatively analyze the factors associated with the functioning of geothermal heat pumps. The paper covers both thermodynamic and economic quantities that are essential when dealing with geothermal heat pumps, thus giving us a larger picture of where one can start. The overall assembly shown in the slide consists of a compressor and loops of pipes in the ground which help circulate the antifreeze solution. The antifreeze solution helps exchange heat with the ground. During summers, the ground is at a lower temperature as compared to the ambient air and hence the system loses heat to the ground. The opposite happens during the winters when the ground is at a higher temperature and the system gains heat from the ground. So we consider a control volume that of a section of length L having inner and outer radii R1 and R2 of a pipe. The coolant enters the control volume at a temperature T inlet and leaves at a temperature T outlet with the mass flow rate being m dot. The surrounding ground temperature is taken to be constant TGR. The environment of the system consists of the ground. Heat is transferred between the antifreeze and the pipe walls and between the pipe walls and the soil. The heat transfer processes that are occurring here are conduction through the pipe wall and convection between the antifreeze and the pipe walls. Radiation doesn't exist as the pipe is surrounded by an opaque medium. We do an integral balance on the system. Here it is ground and vertical loop system. The heat fluxes consist of two components. We have conduction through the pipe and convection between the pipe and the antifreeze solution. Antifreeze solution here loses its internal energy. We have a fixed inlet temperature of 295 Kelvin and a ground temperature of 283 Kelvin. We use high density polyethylene pipes with inner diameter 2.5 cm and outer diameter 3 cm. The antifreeze solution is a 50% by weight mixture of water and ethylene glycol. We plan to find the temperature distribution along the pipe. We know that the ground temperature is constant and the flow is fully developed. We have considered a fixed inlet temperature of 295 Kelvin and a ground temperature of 283 Kelvin. Heat fluxes are due to conduction through the pipe wall and convection between antifreeze solution and the pipe wall. The convective heat transfer coefficient between the pipe wall and the antifreeze is estimated using the Nusselt number correlation for laminar pipe internal flow with the constant outer surface temperature. The Nusselt number comes, comes out to be 3.66. The total rate of heat loss from the pipe 
due to both convection and conduction is shown as as follows also since the conduction and convection are comparable they are taken into account in the overall heat transfer coefficient now we consider the technical problem that we are about to solve so we consider a closed vertical loop of a geothermal heat pump having fixed inlet temperature of 295 kelvin installed in soil having a uniform temperature of 283 kelvin we need to find the optimal length and the mass flow rate that is power so that we reach the break even with respect to an air conditioner of the same cooling rate in the least amount of time here we assume that the heat capacity of the soil is confined the geothermal assembly we have considered gives a cooling rate of 2.216 kilowatt the energy consumption of the ac with the same cooling rate having an eer of 2.7 would be 0.821 kilowatt we use the following values in the calculation the pipe thermal conductivity the anti freeze heat capacity the anti freeze viscosity the anti freeze thermal conductivity refrigerant flow rate ac energy efficient ratio value that is the eer value of the ac daily operating hours per unit charge ac installation cost digging cost per meter and the installation cost now handing over to devishri moving on to the temperature profile we have considered a cylindrical coordinate system for determining the temperature profile in the pipe the following diagram shows the steady state temperature profile in the radial direction pn is the anti freeze temperature whereas tgr is the ground temperature for solving the problem the generic equations used are as follows This equation gives the relation between the Reynolds number and the volumetric flow rate of the fluid. The convective heat transfer coefficient can be found out using the Nusselt number, the thermal conductivity, and the diameter of the pipe. This equation gives the relation between the total heat transfer rate per unit length of the through the pipe and the difference in the temperature between the inlet temperature and the ground temperature using the overall heat transfer coefficient. Finally, this equation gives the relation between the rate of rate of heat transfer and the rate of change of temperature for the antifreeze solution. The length scales used in the problem are the outer radius in the radial direction and the pipe length in the axial direction. Some of the assumptions and simplifications used for solving the problem are: laminar and fully developed flow in the pipe, soil heat capacity is taken to be infinite, turns in the pipes don't affect the flow. no heat transfer is considered between the pipes and the ground temperature profile is considered to be constant and no viscous heating the nusselt number correlation used is that for a laminar pipe internal flow with a constant outer surface temperature that is nusselt number is equal to 3.66 finally we get The heat the rate of heat transfer as a function of the mass flow rate, the difference in the temperature between the input inlet temperature and the ground temperature, and the overall heat transfer coefficient expressed as alpha. Using these, we finally get expressions for the outlet temperature in terms of the length of the pipe and the volumetric flow rate, and the relation between the mass flow rate and the length of the pipe. plotting the last two equations we get a plot of the steady state temperature of the pipe versus the pipe length and the plot of the pipe length versus the mass flow rate using these for the constraint optimization we get that the pay off time is 289 months the numerical analysis is done as follows we use the cost analysis to get a rough expression for the of the payback period in months which is then optimized over possible ground loop configurations to get the most cost efficient setup the constraints involved arise from the fixed magnitude of heat rate absorbed by the ground loop that this gives us an equation in flow rate and pipe length which we need to satisfy coming to the conclusion we find that the geothermal heat pumps can feasibly replace air conditioners and the total cost is paid off in 289 months considering an average use of 6 hours per day 
This implies that geothermal heat pumps might not be economical for small households, but significant cost reduction can be achieved for applications requiring longer operational hours, such as large complexes, offices, hotels, factories, etc. Some of the caveats of the simplifications and assumptions used in problem solving are laminar and fully developed flow is considered. The flow is likely to be turbulent and hence there are dissipative losses that had been neglected by us. Also, the effect of the turns in the pipe is considered negligible while they might be significant. The heat capacity of the soil is considered to be infinite. This might not be true since there can be local variations in temperature. As we had considered a single pipe, we had neglected heat transfer between the pipes, although this should be accounted for. We had considered that the ground temperature profile remains constant with depth, although there do exist slight variations in the temperature as we change depth. Further improvements that could be possible are choosing an open water well loop, using multiple loops for calculations, and if calculations are done, taking into account the effect of simplifying assumptions such as the laminar flow, infinite soil heat capacity, no effect of turns of the pipe, then the scope of improvement would be more clearly visible. Some of the possible avenues for future study are studying materials for geothermal heat pumps to improve efficiency and developing solutions which are better suited to households. Thank you.